Hi, I'm Carl Schilling. I'm the founder and CEO of the Advocacy Network. And uh, for many of you who followed me, you know, through the Advocacy Network and through a lot of our work, you know, we've helped save the public over $15 million that would have been lost directly to some form of financial victimization, whether that be fraud, scams, or most importantly, predatory sales tactics. So today, no graphs, no charts. I just want to talk to you uh, person to person from a common sense perspective, okay? I want to talk to you about uh, what I believe is one of the greater financial victimizations that exists today and is going on. And it is uh, truly, truly hampering the middle class. It's very damaging to the middle class. In the last 60 days, we have seen over $60 trillion of, of uh, wealth evaporated. Okay, $6 trillion worth of wealth in 60 days just totally evaporated. Now, most of that wealth was on the backs of middle-class people. And most of that wealth was sitting in a qualified plan, a 401k, an HR 10, a Keo plan for those who had their own little businesses, um, and doctors and, and dentists and people like that certainly have Keo plans, and uh, IRAs. And just any form of a qualified plan. I'm not going to go back through the history for you. We've done that many times. And I know you, you get tired of hearing it. ERISA started way back in the late 70s and was really promoted uh, by the Reagan administration because I think at that point in time, they had a very clear vision realizing that the baby boomer society was going to be a great stressor on Social Security and Medicare when baby boomers started to get to the fourth quarter of life. So as all the baby boomers turn 65, then all of a sudden, this mad dash, it's going to really stress Social Security. And that's been happening right now because we're in the midst of that. It's still not over. Baby boomers have not yet totally come through the pathway of that fourth quarter. So that was really the mindset. They wanted to incentivize people to uh, to get money into planning for themselves so they would save some more retirement money on their own um, because they realized that uh, many types of the, the, the defined benefit retirement plans that everybody was enjoying, you know, through the 1960s and the 70s, you know, right straight up from long ago, those defined benefit plans were coming to a halt. Very expensive, very expensive to administrate. And it was very uh, uh, onerous on, on management because they were providing so much of that retirement funding and future funding for their employees. So uh, anyway, that's, that's the little snapshot of history of, of retirement planning. But at some point, and uh, I cut my teeth in this industry, uh, learning and drinking the same Kool-Aid everybody else did. Um, you know, that Kool-Aid was that, um, you know, this was a magnificent opportunity to get a tax deduction so that I was out there with products that would give you a tax deduction now, grow tax deferred, uh, and then at some later date, uh, you know, uh, reach uh, a, a tax point where you had to pay the taxes. But supposedly that tax rate would be lower because you'd be in your retirement years, you'd be earning less money. And uh, obviously, you wouldn't have some of the same financial burdens that you had when you were working. OK, so uh, that whole story between you and I has been around for 60 years. Nonsense. It's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. And there's a lot of reasons why. OK, let's just look over a couple of those considerations. Why take a tax deduction at a period where you're in the lowest tax bracket you're ever going to be in? Does that make sense? to take a tax deduction now with dollars that you can have free and clear, paid the tax on, and grow tax deferred and not have any taxation on the back end. So that in itself, the first premise that a tax deduction is of value, it's nonsense. That's just a carrot with a very big stick behind it. That's just a carrot that to suck you in to uh, getting into a partnership with the government, because you will, you're a partner with the government. And this partner now owns this funding of yours free and clear, because they're going to tell you exactly how, when, 
and how much you can distribute to yourself when the time comes to distribute. Oh, and by the way, when the distributions start, they're also going to determine the tax rate at that point. They're not going to tell you what the tax rate is now. They're not going to grandfather you and promise you a tax rate. They're going to do whatever the tax rate is, okay, period. Now, you have to ask yourself, is it possible that tax rates in the future could be lower than they are today based on the economic climate that we live in. I think any common sense consideration, the answer to that is no. Tax rates have to be higher and they're gonna be substantially higher. And the worst period in time that you're gonna to wanna to pay that tax is when you're totally retired and you need as much income as you can get. So, you are sitting in a ticking time bomb. If you're in a 401k, if you're in an IRA, I don't need to tell you. I know you felt the pain. I know you've seen the losses. But look, my work with clients is very, very simple. I have a 30-minute a consultation. I explain to you step-by-step -step a strategy that can liquidate you out of any qualified plan right now zero taxation on that liquidation, uh, puts you in a position um, where you can establish tax advantaged income for yourself alongside whatever you're doing uh, right now, not changing careers or any of that type of thing, but increasing your income. And then also creating your own bank, your own bank that you can rely on that'll give you tax-free liquidity, It'll give you tax-free income at retirement if you build it that way, totally tax-free. Nobody knows about that income at all. No partners on that income. And uh, also generational wealth. Now, for a long time, the Rockefellers, you know, and all of the uh, DuPonts and everybody you could think of, the uh, they knew these strategies, okay? Uh, in their time, it was a little different uh, usage but it was the proper use of life insurance. And yes, life insurance is involved in part of the planning, but it's not all of the planning. Um, too many life insurance agents would, would, uh, would, would suck you into a vacuum and make it everything, but it's not. It's not. Life insurance is just a logical piece, okay, of the strategy. There's uh, 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 other considerations to be had and everybody's circumstance is a little different. So you have to look at your assets can you liquidate that retirement plan and get out now? Save yourself um, a lot of your existing cash, okay? Uh, people ask me, well, what about the match? You know, that my company matches. Well, the match is like a red herring uh, because uh, quite frankly, it's not really free money. It, it's another, it's, it's almost like the incentive that you get a tax deduction to join the partnership with the government. The uh, other hook, as you want to call it, or maybe the golden handcuff is to uh, give you a uh, um, a match, you know, match 3%, 4%, whatever they match, but you're still stuck in that retirement partnership with the government. There's still no way out of that. So it doesn't make a difference how much free money they give you. At the end of the day, you're going to give most of it back to the government. So the government loves the match. The government is thrilled with the match. That's just more money that they can suck out when you do come to this retirement moment, okay? So those are the reasons. Now, look, this is totally counterintuitive, and it's totally uh, uh, against all financial advice, okay? All financial advice, because you've got to understand the financial advice that comes through the, uh, the financial services industry is built around uh, a commitment to Wall Street, it's built around uh, financial advisory and financial um, uh, financial planners who uh, their income is deciphered and determined based on how many of these kind of products they can put you in, okay? And uh, they don't uh, honestly look at products uh, the way you would want them to look at them and say, oh, well, I'm looking for your best interest, okay? What we say at the Advocacy Network is very simple. Uh, your best interest is my only concern. And that's, that's just facts, okay? And we've lived that for now 12 years in this, and I'm 44 years in the industry. 
So again, we have a strategy. It's called the middle class millionaire plan. I work predominantly with middle class people. Um, occasionally, I'll run into a uh, a wealthy client, you know, and it'll uh, it'll make sense and we'll match up. But for the most part, it's middle class people I work with to show them how to um, find what is the unique assets they may have right now and and plan and structure those assets so that they're out of the partnership with the government, that they are in full control of their own money, their own success or failure. And, and quite frankly, um, I know that that's daunting for some people, but believe me, you're far better off trusting yourself than you are trusting a partnership with the government, okay? No matter how many people tell you you're not smart enough or you'll lose all your money or you can't control all your own money because you need someone like me, not meaning me, but the person talking to you in a financial advisory, not true, not true. We can give you all kinds of recommendations and advice that'll just help you decide for yourself. Your decisions about money are what's going to count for you. I can't make decisions for you about your money. Now, what I can do is show you a pathway to financial independence that's worked. I can show you a successful strategy. I can show you how those things fit together. The decision's always yours. You have to decide what's best for you. It's your money. But I don't want you to live in the fear that you have to stay partnered with the government because that's your safe haven. It's not. It's not safe at all. It's the most risky place to possibly be. And it is a form of financial victimization. It's not a coincidence, folks, that we have about $30 trillion in debt, and we also have about 30 to $31 trillion in qualified plans. I don't think that's a coincidence. Okay? So, again, you want to be partnered with the government? You will feel like you're safe? Okay, I can't, I can't uh, interfere. But if you would like to hear a different way, a very successful strategy, got a lot of clients, very happy, and uh, we take 30 minutes, then let's do it. Let's do it. 30 minutes, just like I'm on the screen with you right now. You'll be wherever you are on the screen, and we will go over everything. We dot the I's and cross the T's and share with you the entire process. Now, you can get a head start in that. If you go to theadvocacynet.com, T-H-E, advocacynet.com, uh, you can download the Middle Class Millionaire Plan and you can get a head start on some of these concepts. The book does not obviously share everything, okay? Because um, quite frankly, some of this message uh, is not really for the broad public, okay? Because uh, um, certainly I'm counterintuitive and I'm running against the grain of the financial, of a, a good portion of the financial advisory services, you know, the Wall Street uh, crew, you know, because I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid anymore. So um, again, uh, theadvocacynet.com, get the book. And if you scroll down a page, you'll see a Calendly link and you can schedule a consultation with me. Look, you got nothing to lose, okay? No obligation, no stress. We're not high pressure. We just simply provide you with a lot of different information, important information, and then let you decide what it is you want to do, okay? So again, um, I look forward to having a chance to speak with you, and um, hopefully you will take advantage of that. And you can also reach me at 321-947-3220 anytime. So you have a wonderful day and consider what I'm discussing with you, okay? Give it some thought. Take care.